Hi everyone and welcome along. I am so excited because my Portugal retreat in October is guaranteed. We are going ahead and that means that today I am going to do a little example of the kind of things we're going to be painting out in Portugal because we do have a few spaces left and I'd love you to join me on them if you fancy. So I'm going to be painting a lovely wildflower meadow whilst talking you through all of the itinerary of what we're going to be doing over those four days. What was it five? Five days four nights it's going to be a lovely little bit of relaxing me time so grab your paints and let's get started so we're going to begin with uh, we've got an a5 piece of paper and I'm going to start by just drawing in the sort of vague stems that I want in my piece and some of the flowers especially ones further down below that are going to be caught up in a sort of meadowy wash um, because we're going to put some masking fluid on them so I'm going to just draw in some little daisies so start with a little a uh, little sort of oval shape and then from there some sort of rather wobbly wayward petals. I'm drawing this quite lightly um, but you really want to make sure that you draw it really really nice and pale um, because it just makes your life a whole lot easier when rubbing out the pencil later on. So we've got them and then pop in few more little stems who will have a flower here so yes basically today this tutorial is one big celebration of the fact that we're going to Portugal and you can come too um, we've been we launched this lovely retreat it's uh, in the south region of Portugal in Montserrat. Such a stunning countryside. Oh, and the venue that we're going to be having the lessons at is a really beautiful place called Sofia in Montserrat. And as we go through this tutorial, I'm just going to talk through to you like what we're going to be doing, the itinerary, because what's nice is watercolour is the, the key feature, but we're going to be doing other things too, um, really sort of enjoying being there at the venue. So I'm just going to add a few extra little pencil marks for flowers that I would like to have sort of painted in in masking fluid so I'm just sort of doing a few slightly less obvious kind of flower shapes here we'll pop in a few just little sort of wobbly shapes that means we can turn those into something lovely later on okay so now I've got some masking fluid here masking fluid is the liquid um, the liquid masking which is just this amazing sort of gluey texture that allows you to cover over certain areas that you don't want painted. You could always drop in a few more bits if you wanted. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just paint in these lower down flowers and we'll let that dry and then we will begin with our wash. That has now dried, you can see it's all tacky. I also added just a few extra little like dots of masking fluid in there. And now I've got my mop brush, this fantastic uh, mop, which you can buy in my shop if you're looking for something like this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet the page. Now I've um, masked down my page with some tape. Uh, just to sort of keep it keep it fixed and reduce the amount of warping but what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm not going to sort of do a, a wash right out to the corners I'm going to do a sort of scribble wash which is just sort of capturing the page like that just sort of quite roughly I'm not sort of going right out to the edges um, 
I'm just using that very quickly just to get a nice bit of coverage. And now I'm going to use another brush which is available in my shop, another really fantastic brush. Um, it's larger than my normal pointed rounds and it's just a fantastic brush for doing large areas with colour um, but when you just want a little bit more control than with the mop because you still get that nice pointed end. So I've just got that brush wet and I'll dab it off just to get the excess water off and I've woken up uh, the green tones and the dark shadowy tones so I've got green gold, sap green, hooker's green and then Payne's grey, moon glow, burnt sienna. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to build up a sense of the, the base of the piece, the meadow. So start off with my lighter colours first, just a few dabs of the green gold. And you can see that the, uh, the masking fluid is just resisting that colour. I'm going to take that colour off my brush now, just wipe, get it swirling in the water get rid of the excess colour there and now I'll build up a bit more uh, tone with my sap green and I might also just add in a few sweeps of the colour just going up there just adding into the general sort of um, the movement of the piece I suppose and then what I'm going to do whilst I have this green on my brush so I'm actually going to just flick some green splatter it on you might hear crumble in a sec because I can hear I can hear activity outside <laughs> um, lovely okay that's really nice and now I'm going to take my slightly smaller pointed round brush which is a size 8 and I'm going to start to look at the sort of shadier, darker areas of this meadow. The colours will all dry quite a lot lighter, but what I want to do is I want to drop in some of this darker colour just sort of beneath some of these flowers, as well as just a few sort of little sort of roots and shoots. Of course it's all going to bleed and blend away, but what you really want to make sure of with masking fluid is that you're making sure there's a bit of colour behind it. Now of course these two flowers here there's not a huge amount going on behind them at the moment but I did want to make sure that I captured uh, just that masking fluid on there just because I want to make sure just in case if I did put a bit of a wash or a splatter over the top of there. So that's looking really nice. I think for one last little go I'll just take my large brush here with just clean not really any color on it and just sort of send a little bit more going up there but that's looking really lovely so we're going to just leave that to dry 100% um, try and be patient and try and allow it to dry in its own time without adding any heat um, and that's particularly important when you're using masking fluid you want to make sure uh, that that doesn't get dried too much because uh, it could end up sticking to the page if it's if it's art, um, artificially dried with heat. Okay, so we're still in the drying process, but the other thing I thought might be fun is I'm going to take a, a little like credit card and I just want to run it through the piece just whilst the piece is in the process of drying, and you can get these lovely extra little stems starting to appear. So any sort of plastic curved edge card will do, um, but it's just a rather lovely extra little tip. And so when we are in Portugal, we are going to be enjoying the beautiful surroundings of the meadows around um, Sofia in Montserrat and I think what will be lovely is taking that inspiration from the, the tall grasses and the, the flowers and just really getting that sense of energy. So we are going to be uh, creating lovely pieces of botanical painting, flower paintings and also just a little bit more based in the landscape so this is a nice little example of it. So now you can see those lovely 
marks and effects in the page. So now we can just let it dry 100% and then we'll get back to painting in some detail. So our piece is fully dry now. I've still got the masking fluid on because we're going to continue to do some painting making uh, use of the fact that those flowers are still not uh, uncovered from the masking fluid. So I've got some sap green, a bit more concentrated now, and I'm also going to mix up some sap green into this shadowy mix up here with the Payne's Grey and Burnt Sienna. And what I want to do is I want to start sort of creating some stems. So I've got some, uh, I've got my rigger brush here, and what I want to do is uh, a few things. So on one hand, we've got our our little our little sort of masking fluid flowers, which we can start to sort of join up like this. We can also add in extra stems that we haven't yet sort of painted anything onto them yet, and. Um, how good is the rigger brush, by the way? And then the other thing is we can actually make even better use of these highlighted stems here by just sort of painting in along the side, even like maybe a sort of even finer line on the other side, and just make something a little more of them. And then of course, with the rigger brush, is it is rather wonderful for certain types of long slender leaves. So you can see I can paint in and I can paint in the masking fluid on those flowers is still going to be nicely protected. So whilst I paint, I'm gonna talk you through the very exciting itinerary in Portugal, just so you can find out exactly what we're gonna be up to and you can book one of those last few spaces if you like. So we are going to Lisbon, flying into Lisbon on the 26th of October. So the weather is going to be glorious because let's face it, it's pretty hot in Europe at the moment. And by October, it's going to be beautifully warm, but just a lot more manageable for those of us who don't love the extreme heat. So flying into Lisbon Airport on Thursday 26th of October and we will be picked up by the wonderful team at Sofia in Montserrat and taken to this beautiful hotel where you will be staying, the Hotel Villa Planitie Montserrat and I'm really sorry if, I, if my pronunciation is, is horrible. Um, but that is where everyone will be staying and then each day there's a short walk over to the beautiful Sofia in Montserrat and for anyone with sort of limited mobility there is an option for uh, a bit of transport if need be. So on the 27th of October we'll wake up have a lovely breakfast and the day is going to begin actually with an olive picking demo because that is what's going on in the region at that point that it's the harvest time for olive picking so we're going to see some of that and then going to enjoy some of the the fruits of that labor and we are going to have our first watercolor class where I'm going to talk you through the introductory basics of botanical watercolor painting in my new botanical style so the perfect thing is is this what this retreat is absolutely ideal for painters of all abilities whether you've been painting with me from the beginning or you are much newer to this it doesn't matter that's the beauty of it we will all be getting up to speed and I will be getting you ready to paint in my kind of style. And the day is not over because we're going to be going to a most beautiful local rug factory and to an amazing local ceramicist. It's all about really celebrating the artisans in the region and uh, actually even having a little ceramic class, which is pretty amazing. Um, we're gonna have wine tasting. We're gonna have dinner at a castle, I mean, Oh my goodness, it just sounds wonderful. And of course, I'm going to be there the whole time with you, enjoying all these wonderful delights of the region. Okay, so I've got lots of nice stems in here with my rigger brush. I'm now going to go up a size, up to my size zero brush, and I want to start to just 
expand on the stems just in the bottom here and maybe add a few more leaves so using the brush more with a, a broad brush stroke there you go okay so next the next few days Saturday and Sunday are going to be full watercolour painting days so we are going to move from the basics that we've learnt to heading out into the grounds and gardens and painting what's in front of us uh, be it plants, flowers, maybe even a few little bits of wildlife if we see them and it'll be all about just enjoying and relaxing into the beautiful surroundings and having lovely lunch uh, obviously you can ask me any questions of your paintings you know I'm there to help and teach and enjoy the surroundings with you so that's two full days of watercolor painting with me right that's looking really nice we're going to let that dry and move on to the next stage I'm now using my size zero brush to add in some just very simple little brush stroke leaves and you can see actually sometimes the sort of rougher they are the more realistic they look so I'm just combining green gold sap green maybe even a little of my darker greens but just looking for places where a leaf here or there is going to look really nice um, and even a, maybe an extra little bit here and there I rather like the sort of rather stringy tendril like quality to these pieces okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to allow this to dry fully and rub out the masking fluid now the way we do that is we just sort of start to there we go sort of press at it a little with your finger and as long as the paint around it is dry you'll be able to peel all of that off so we'll just let that dry and go to the next stage how lovely does it look even just with the masking fluid off um, so now we're going to start painting in some flowers which will be cool so I've got some nice imperial purple here and I'll start with the big one up here I've got a size zero brush and what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of angle the brush down quite low to the page and what's going to happen is it's going to give me a sort of quite a natural rough sort of petal edge that I, I'm sort of allowing it to not be a sort of perfect petal I quite like that and I'm getting some bits of unpainted space which I like as well so I'm just filling in those those areas and then I'm going to just take a much more concentrated bit of the purple and just send some of that out from the middle and also from just the edge ends of the petals as well and these little scribbles that you do whilst the flower is still whilst those petals are still wet just really turn it into a, a more lifelike flower so we'll do that with the the pink here as well so size zero brush still should work just angling it down So I'm using permanent rose here and it's just you can see how nice it is to have the masking fluid just give us that freedom to not have to be worrying about painting like really heavily with the color on top or or having sort of left those gaps in the first place um, without using masking fluid so I'm just doing exactly the same technique here so there we go so we're going to be painting like this in Portugal um, inspired by our, our beautiful surroundings 
And it's only uh, five days, four nights, so it's going to be over before we know it, but I think it's just such an important thing to take some time for yourself. So you'll be arriving on Thursday, 26th of October. Over that time, there'll be five watercolour lessons, the five half-day sessions, um, and other lovely little creative retreats like um, visits to the rug factory, ceramics, a little bit of journaling. If you would like a little bit of yoga, um, depending, you know, that's an optional extra and lovely food and drink and lovely company um, and a, a real sense of the countryside. I can't wait. I'm so excited. Um, and I'm, I'm just really, really wanting to make sure that we get a wonderful bunch of people on there. And I know we've already got some amazing people. So why don't you come and join us? Um, have a look down below in the episode notes. And meanwhile, I've got some very diluted shadow mix here of the Payne's Grey and the Burnt Sienna. And I'm going to paint these daisies. I'm going to use the fact that we've got the white the petals showing up, but I'm just going to scribble in a little bit of this grey tone from the sort of center outwards and we can just paint these in like this so whilst I wait for those to dry we've got other little uh, sort of buds and flowers popping up around the place so I've got some cadmium yellow here which I'm going to just dab onto these here, allowing some of that unpainted space to stand out there. And I'll do another one there. And then for a little bit of a sort of more of a low light, extra bit of color, just dab in some cadmium orange. So really it's it's up to you sort of what colours that you choose to, to go for. I'm trying to sort of keep some kind of colour palette going. I love the sort of purpley pinks with the yellows. That's two sort of complementary colours going on. And, and use the unpainted space as well to your advantage. And then of course also the, the more concentrated low light of the color you've got as well to just add that lovely rounded depth. And it just suddenly jumps off the page a little bit more. So at this stage, every flower, oh, I have just noticed those ones. <laughs> every flower, she says, not quite, has got a little something. So, but you can still see like, it's just a case of just adding a little bit of color in there. And now I'm going to add like a next layer of detail. So for the daisies, I've got my two tenths brush and I'm going to paint in some cadmium yellow in there and then you could always add in a little bit of the cadmium orange and I think we'll also do that colour for inside these flowers as well. So you want to make sure that the first layer of petals has dried and then you can just start to add just that a little bit more detail here and there and you might also want to add in a bit more uh, a bit more of a stronger green so I've got some sap green I've just added a bit of Payne's grey maybe make a little sort of sepal cup there for those flowers and also just adding an extra little bit of darkness
I don't even know what these little things are, but they look quite fun. So I'm just now going to continue. You, know, you might need to add a, an extra stem here or there an extra little flower that's popped up. Don't forget about the stems uh, further up out of the piece and if they want a little bit extra. But the beauty of this is you can create this rather sort of light frothy piece of a, of a meadow without um, sort of losing the intensity of the colour because you used a bit of masking fluid in the first place. To finish off, all we need to do is just a little bit of darkness in some elements. So I'm going to just take a bit of a sort of shadowy mix from all the shadowy things I've been using. So a little bit of the dark green, a little bit of Payne's grey. And I don't need too much on the brush. I've got my two tenths brush. And what I want to do is just dab a little bit just around the sort of bottom side of the flowers and just extend that bit of shadow down into the petals there and it just really helps create that slightly rounder feeling getting that slight low light on a few bits And I think that looks really rather lovely. So we just need to peel off the masking tape. Just do it carefully. Washi tape is what I use. Uh, this is MT, the brand, MT washi tape. And um, it's just gentle enough that it doesn't rip off any of the paper as well. So what we just need to do is let that dry 100% and then I'm just gonna give a little rub out so we get rid of any pencil lines. So I've done a light rubbing out of the pencil uh, with my little hard eraser here and it's just looking gorgeous. So thanks so much for watching. Don't forget uh, if you want to join me in Portugal, get one of those last few spaces on the retreat, head to the episode notes below, click the link and you won't regret it. Thanks so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed that one. To book onto our Portugal retreat, head to the episode notes below with the link. And of course, I want to say a huge thank you to our patrons for their support, because that support enables us to keep creating videos like these that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed it, then hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you got on with that one. And of course, if you never want to miss another video, then hit the little subscribe button and the notification bell, and we'll see you again next time. Bye.